Here we are at the Dijub Comprehensive Senior Secondary School. Sir, could you like telling us your name, please? I am Al Haji Badara Yoro Jalo. I'm the principal. We would like to know some of the problems your school is facing. Problems? The beginning of the academic year actually are unsurmountable. One, the students normally, the first week of the academic year, mostly public schools, students, many of them don't come to school. They are in the habit of extending their holidays by five days. So hopefully we'll see them next week. But I think this is not something that the ed education system and the school is really accepting. But we had no choice. We are not living with the students. They come from homes. And if the parents choose to ignore their children, not coming to school during the opening of school, actually the school cannot do much. We can only deal with the students when we see them. But if we don't see them, it's unfortunate we cannot do much. My main concern here is I would like to urge parents to be very vigilant and to be very committed to the education of their children. Because with this present generation, it is the responsibility of parents to monitor their children, to entice their children to be interested in their own education, to ensure that they help the school encourage their children to take responsibility for their education. I think fundamentally, this is one main problem. It's not only affected, affecting the job comprehensive school. It's affecting many of the public schools within these areas. Some of the students are still at their holiday environment. The new schools have opened, but they say, ah, younger do am. Here in the job, first day is chock on board. So if you miss the first day, the second day, the third day, you've missed a lot. So fundamentally, when school starts, the first day, children do not turn up in like numbers. Okay, sir. What are some of the measures put in place by your school to avoid such, if not put an end to it? Actually, as I said earlier on, the parents have responsibility of helping the school. The school cannot go into the homes of all the students and push them out of their homes to the school. What we are doing is we are trying to sensitize the parents. At PTA meetings, please, please ensure that you push your children to come to school when school opens. Other than that, we are taking measures of talking to the students. Now that we don't use the cane, we cannot do much. But actually marking the students that are not in school as absent and reflecting their absence on their reports so that their parents will know that the, their kids have not come to school at the beginning of the time. There isn't much we can do about it. It's, it's exclusively the responsibility of the parents. How can you compare the educational system in the Gambia? They have a lot of things to compare now. They have had radio uh, discussions. They have had interviews. They have had the opportunity of sitting at teacher parent forum. And the system that we are in is definitely or absolutely different from the former system. And to start with, what I have noticed, and many learned parents, is during our time, you are talking about 50 something years back, the students will chase the teachers to teach them. And that's why we had very good products at the time. But the system now has come in such a way that students are being chased by teachers to teach them. If you have a class of 30, you cannot chase all those students. Now the system now is, 
we have inherited or adapted or adopted a lot of foreign systems of education. You see what I'm talking about here? When we talk about the Gambian education system, it must be geared not only delivering, I mean, the education, but the education should have a purpose. Previously, during colonial days, the Europeans designed the education system. You know what they were looking for? To train Gambians to serve their purpose in the civil service. For instance, Yundum College. I went to Yundum College to be trained. Behold, when we were trained as, as teachers, they were not only training us, they were training teachers and also training high-class educated people to serve in the civil service. Most of the ministers, permanent secretaries, about 30 years back, they started as teachers. That's why they are so good. They become very versatile. Versatile in the sense that they can, you put them anywhere, they can perform. If I were to talk to you about economic development, you will believe that I'm an, an economist. Because the system that I went through prepared me to be versatile. Once in the old system you can read and write, you can teach yourself everything. But here, now, with the new system, mass promotion is a big problem. In all this, you have to pass your internal school exams to be promoted to the next class. And then get in, entering into high school is a serious selective examination known as the common entrance. I went to Gambia High School. Gambia High School at the time in 1961-62, it's only 30 students for the Form 1, Form 1A, Form 1B. If you don't make the mark, there's no way you can enter Gambia High School, St. Augustine's, and Amitage High School, to just uh, to name a few of the high schools that were there. Entering into high school is, was highly competitive. But now, whether you sit through on exams or not, you are promoted from one class to another. <music>